I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Thank you to this week's sponsor, SBA Complete. Is your financial institution considering SBA lending? Maybe you need to improve your current SBA line of business. We're SBA Complete, the most experienced SBA lender service provider in the country. Executing an SBA loan program can be complex and difficult to navigate without an experienced and knowledgeable team, but most financial institutions cannot find the right talent or afford to bring the expertise in-house. That's why lenders across the country choose SBA Complete. Three words strike fear into an SBA lender's heart. What do we do? Personal resource test has, is back on the scene. On September 28th, SBA put a proposed rule on the Federal Register. Listen to Lance Sexton and I discuss this. This is new. We're going to write about this on Tuesday. This just came out in the Federal Register. And the question is, do you believe SBA should adopt a new standard personal resource test for owners to inject, quote, excess unquote, cash into the small business venture. And this is an incredibly interesting question, Bob. As you know, a couple years back, they eliminated the personal resource test, but they kind of wound it into the credit elsewhere. But it, but it's, once again, another gray area in the SOP 5010-5J. We're going to talk about that. For those of you who said no, I think your fears are going to be a little bit of leave. Lance and I have looked at this. Our initial reaction is positive. Oh, we're going to go into it right now. Let's go to the next slide, Joseph. Here's, this is what SBA is proposing. First of all, read the rule. It came out on September 28th. You, everyone has the ability to comment on it and say, hey, I like it or I don't like it. But this is what it says, Lance. If we have a loan of $350,000 or less, each 20% owner of the applicant must inject liquid assets that are in excess of one and three quarter times the total financing package. So if my math is right, on a $200,000 loan, if they have more than $325,000, whatever's over the three twenty-five dollars has to go into the business or $200,000 at the lower level. Um, I think that's a livable standard, Lance. What do you think? Oh, I agree, Bob. I, I think most of us do not experience SBA loans where the owners have ex extremely exceptional cash balances. Uh, I, I think it's fair when they make excess cash more than the amount of the loan. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. If somebody has $325,000 in cash and they're wanting to get $200,000 using an SBA loan, uh, you know, anything above the 325 is pretty obvious. They should inject it into their business. 401ks are exempt. IRAs mm -hmm. are exempt. So we're not talking about those nice balances in the retirement funds. We're talking about excess cash. And I agree with you, Lance. Um, if someone has that much, and, and SBA is not asking for all of it. They're asking for above that standard. So I, I think my initial review of this, the limits they set, I believe, are fair, reasonable, and prudent. Now, you have to be careful. They say the 20% owner, we're going to have a question about that later on, but they also say that includes, Lance, spouses and children. And what well, they're concerned about you know, are someone who's shuffling stuff to other uh, family members. Yeah, one of the things that... Uh, I like about it, Bob, is, is it just clarifies an area right now that, that's kind of gray. And right now the credit elsewhere test requires that you look at the personal resources, but there's no definition of what is considered excess. And, uh, you know, you get a loan default, you get into a guaranteed purchase, SBA goes back and looks at the original personal financial statements and they say, hey, they had a ton of cash in a money market account. Why didn't you make them put it in? I, I prefer in the SOPs guy, guys, I love changes where it clarifies. And this is going to be a change that's going to clarify things for us and help us to be more compliant SBA lenders. Hotel ownership is another bane of SBA lending structures. Lance Sex and I discussed a great question that came into our Coma Report live session. 
What do we do when we have a minority shareholder who owns 15% of the small business entity? And it has to do with our uh, hotel financing and lands. What's your opinion on this now? Uh, for a while, SBA was requiring any minority shareholder, well, I guess one that had more than 10%, to supply the personal financial statement. And so the centers could look at the personal resource cash availability by that minority shareholder. What do we do if someone comes in with 15%? I'm, I'm going to ask for, I mean, I'm going to ask for financial statements. I think the hotel industry is its own special uh, market for SBA loans. And, and the inspector general certainly has found some instances of fraudulent behavior in hotel lending. So, and, and we have a bunch of great participant lenders on here, but I'm going to look uh, on most hotel deals, I'm going to try to vet out and look at the financial uh, situation on all owners. I think that's prudent. Leanne, the answer to your question is SBA is only going to require the guarantee and the financials on 20%. That's in the SOP. But Lance makes a great point that that's the bar, but we can ask for additional information as a prudent lender. And Lance, I agree with you. I want to know who this is 15% owner. Why is it a 15% owner? What else are they involved with? What are the other affiliates? I strongly urge you to get that financial statement to get a big global cash flow picture of all, of all the owners. And even though that person may not be a guarantor, there's financial capacity there that we may be able to rely on. And I think the underwriter needs to know the history of why we have a 15% owner. In particular, Bob, if, if the equity injection is coming from a minority owner, you're going to want to see those financials particularly. Uh, on hotel deals, guys, if it's been flipped, sold several times during, a, say, a five-year period, this is the third time it's been sold, I'm going to look real hard at all the owners to find out what else they're involved in and what else they have. Continuing discussions about the new SBA Form 159 fee disclosures. The question was raised, what do we do on a straight referral fee? We have a question on how do we document commissions to a loan broker? Uh, on the 159, is it sufficient to say we're going to pay a 1% referral fee, put in 1%, put in a $3,500 fee, and is that sufficient for 159 documentation lands? It is on a fee paid by the bank. If Correct. the bank is paying, you know, where we need more stringent documentation, more detail is when the borrower is paying the fee. But when the bank's paying a fee to a broker for a referral on a loan, you can just put the percentage in the amount. I'm a huge fan of SBA's export programs. The only guaranteed program in the SBA portfolio where you can get a 90% guarantee. Here's a great little refresher from SBA, a clip about Export Express. Remember, you can get a 90% guarantee up to $350,000, 75% for Express loans over $350,000. Conventional, I shouldn't say conventional, export loans under 7A, you can still get that 90% guarantee. Listen to this clip. Many American entrepreneurs think their businesses are too small to compete in the global economy. But in fact, 97% of all exporters are indeed small businesses. To help you become an exporter or expand your exporting business, SBA's Export Express program offers eligible small businesses up to $500,000 in financing. Export Express is the simplest and quickest export loan product SBA offers. You work directly with your bank to obtain the loan. And with an acceptable qualifying application, SBA may approve it in 36 hours or less. You can use Export Express funds for any export development activity, including financing specific export orders or expanding production facilities. You can also purchase equipment inventory or real estate and translate product literature and web content to foreign languages. It's also the only U.S. government loan that funds participation in foreign trade shows or trade missions. There are specific eligibility requirements for Export Express loans. The loans must help you enter or expand into new or existing export markets, 
and your small business must generally be in operation, but not necessarily exporting, for at least a full year. Applying for an Export Express loan is a simple four-step process. Contact your existing lender to determine if it provides SBA Export Express loan. Submit application materials and SBA's borrower information form to your lender. If your request is approved, the lender will submit eligibility information to SBA. SBA will review your information and, if approved, guarantees the loan within 36 hours. Visit sba.gov slash export express to learn more about how SBA can help your small business succeed in exporting. I love talking to small business owners. Hey, a lot of small business owners are also vendors to our industry. Kevin Power, collateral loan specialist, tells us what he does. America West, we're here with Kevin Power, collateral specialist. Kevin, vice president of operations. <laughs> what do you do? We are a nationwide site inspection company, Bob. We do uh, site visits for SBA lenders all over the country. Now, when you say a site visit, be more specific. Sure. So prior to funding an SBA 7A loan or annually on a 504, they've got to go out and do a visit with the borrower, take photos of the property, and document that the business is actually what the business is. And SBA supports this outsourcing of that service? Absolutely, yeah. Right. You know, back in the day, all the BDOs and the lenders would have to go out and drive all over the place, taking photos, coming back to the office, loading it all up. Nowadays, my guys are all over the country. We're able to get out there, take the photos, upload it to the website. They can yeah, download yeah, it. Import yeah, tell it. me the logistics. So how yeah. does that, how does that work? I'm a lender. I'm in Texas. Right. So you get a deal in Salt Lake City. Okay. Right. Before back in the day, you couldn't do it. Right. They couldn't. You couldn't fund that transaction. Now you go on our website. You order a site visit. We go out there. We visit with the borrower. We tour the property. We take photos. We document everything, and we upload it back to our site and email it to you. And then you put it in your package and you can fund the transaction. Kevin, you thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bob. Thank you for joining us today for the Coma Report Update and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time.